I'm Josh. I'm a purple belt in jiu-jitsu, and today I'm ranking all the submissions so you can know which ones you should master and which ones you should just ignore. I'm going to be ranking them on control, availability, and power. Control is based on how hard it is for the other person to escape when you're applying the submission. Availability is how often you're going to be able to find it. Is it a really niche move, or are you able to find it in all these different positions? And lastly, power. Are you getting people just to tap from pain, or are you going to break something? First, I'm doing the armbar. I know I'm going to make some people mad with this one, but the armbar is average. It's hard to control somebody with the armbar because their legs are free to move. So they're able to start stacking you and doing all these other escapes as you try to finish it. Also, you're just hyperextending the arm, not literally breaking it. So a lot of stupid people are willing to either pop or two to escape. But it is really available, so I'm going to put it in B tier. It's good, but not amazing. Next. The triangle. The triangle is A tier. The triangle offers a lot more control than the arm bar because you're controlling the arm and the head. It's also a choke, so people can't just refuse to tap. Also, you can find it in so many different places, but the one issue is that sometimes when you go for it, you'll get your guard passed. In my opinion, it's A tier, but if you have short legs or bad hip mobility, it could go down to C or even D. Now the Americana. The Americana gets a lot of hate because it's the classic big guy move. People say you need strength to finish it, and to some extent, they're right, because it's going to be pretty hard to hit this move on anyone that outweighs you. However, it can create openings for back takes and other submissions. If you're a super heavyweight, you can put this in A tier, but for me, it's going to go in C tier. It's okay, but kind of a big man move. It's time for the rear naked choke. The rear naked choke is the king of submissions, and the statistics show it. The reason it's so powerful is that you can go for it from the most dominant position in jiu-jitsu, the back. And looking for it doesn't make it easier for the other person to escape. So all that time, you can just be controlling them and looking for the submission, which is really powerful. Also, it's a really strong choke because their arm isn't inside. So when you get this fully locked up, it's over. And if you want, you can even finish this submission while their chin's still inside. So this submission is going in S tier. It's the best of the best and my favorite. Speaking of S tier, the sponsor of this video is X Marshall. Unlike the bicep slicer, which is F tier because it's unreliable and lacks pizzazz, X Marshall Rash Guards are high quality, and they have a ton of fun and dapper designs. They also have a large collection of shorts, bats, geese, and basically anything you need when it comes to training or competition. They sponsor a lot of Jiu-Jitsu content creators like me, helping us put out more videos for the community. So click the link in the description to check out their products. You can use code JoshRichBJJ to get 10% off. Now, the guillotine. The guillotine is an interesting submission. It's available whenever their head is in your armpit. So you can find it whenever they shoot a double on you, or you snap them down. Also, if you do it with a high elbow, it's really powerful because it's just your arms on their neck, making a really tight choke. And if you want more control, you can do the arm in variation. It also combos into anacondas and darces. While all those things are good, I think there's a high skill ceiling when it comes to defending these. The person you're doing the choke on has their legs and body free. You're using both your arms on their neck and your legs aren't in the position to easily control the other person. So they're able to jump around, stand up, try getting out of the choke as you try to finish it. My favorite defense when they're doing a high elbow guillotine is to block their elbow so they can bring it up. This makes it hard for them to apply pressure and then you can start stacking up on your head and before you know it, you're gonna be out of it. All in all, it's a good submission, but not great or anything, I'm putting it in B tier. Now on the theme of front headlock submissions, let's talk about the anaconda. The anaconda is similar to a guillotine, but instead you're bringing your arm all the way through and locking up a figure four. You would think locking up this figure four would make it harder for them to escape, but I find a lot of times people are able to bring their back to the mat and get out of the submission. If you want a good front headlock, you do have to be good at this submission because sometimes you're just in a position where it's the only thing you can go for. But at the end of the day, it's kind of situational, doesn't offer the most control, it's kind of hard to finish at times. So it's going in C tier. It's okay, but not the best. Now the Dars. The Dars is basically the Anaconda, but better. It has more control than the Anaconda. You can lock it up in more situations. And it has a neck crank aspect to it that lets you get even more taps. Also, you can finish it while on top, which is a massive bonus. But it's not the most simple submission to finish. You can't just hip into it like an arm bar. It takes some finesse. This makes it a hard choke for beginners to learn, and if you have short arms, the only people you're going to be locking this up on are the members of the kids' class. I don't have the longest arms myself, so I struggle with this one. All in all, for the average person, this is A tier. But if you're built like John Jones, you can bring this one up to S. And for you short arm people, forget this choke exists. Now, the Omoplata. The Omoplata is weird because it's a really available submission. It's easier to lock up than even a triangle in most cases. However, it's also really easy to escape. If they just roll or step over your head, they're gonna be able to get out. But these reactions can be countered with arm bars or triangles. 
and at the very least you can use it to get on top. But at the end of the day, the submission itself is pretty weak, and the moves you could combo with it are pretty predictable and easy to avoid. So I'm gonna have to put this all the way down in D tier. I'm not saying you shouldn't use it, but it's also just kind of bad. Now staying on the theme of shoulder locks, let's talk about the Kimura. The Kimura is the most devastating joint lock, and like the Omoplata, it can be comboed with triangles and arm bars and even back takes. And unlike the Omoplata, the Kimura is a really strong grip, so all these transitions are super tight and it's going to be hard for people to escape during them. With all these things together, it's going in A tier. I would put it in S, but when people lock their hands together, unless you're a lot stronger than them, it's going to be hard to break and you're gonna have to transition, so I just can't put it all the way up in S. Let's talk about a submission you probably haven't even heard of, the Trigo Plata. This is a move you can go for when someone locks their hands in the Kimura. Basically, instead of using your arms to finish and break their grip, you're using your legs. But I found it's hard to finish if they're stronger than you, and there's always a chance that when you go for it, you can slip off. It's also just kind of niche because it can only be used when you already have a Kimura, which is such a strong move already, that usually there's other options you could go for. So I'm putting it down in D tier. Now it's time for another Plata, the Gogo Plata. The Gogo Plata is even more niche than the Trigo Plata. You go for it when you have their arm trapped in the Oma Plata, and then you pull their head down and choke them using your foot. That's right, your foot. As you can imagine, it's kind of easy to defend because if you can bring your chin inside, it kind of negates the whole submission. It's also really niche because you need the perfect angle for it. If they turn away from you, you're not going to be able to go for this. It is a pretty cool submission, but we're going to have to put an F tier because it's pretty easy to defend. Alright, enough of the weird submissions, let's talk about the arm triangle. The arm triangle is the pinnacle of reliability. Unlike the armbar or triangle, when you go for this from mount, you aren't falling down to bottom, you're not losing control. You're able to control them and try to apply that submission. So you can just spam this, tiring the person on bottom out as you try to look for it. It does take some finesse to finish. I'm gonna be honest, I was pretty bad at this submission until like six months ago. And a lot of times when you're not that good at it, you're afraid to go for it because you might gas out your arms. But once you get this choke down, it becomes super tight super reliable i'm putting it in a tier now it's time to talk about the dark arts leg locks we're gonna start with the first one everyone learns the straight ankle the straight ankle is a killer at white belt tournaments because no one knows how to defend it and you can just slide into it super easily and crank it for easy wins but as you go up in levels people start learning that if they put weight on their foot they're going to be able to defend the move and if you're one of those guys who just falls back on it in local tournaments you're going to start losing two points in all the matches you do but don't be that guy as the name would imply it attacks the ankle not the knee so a lot of people are willing to take a pop or two at the ankle and not tap which can make it hard to finish it's a really available sub that's good at a low level or if you truly master it like some people have but i'm gonna have to put it in c tier it's okay but not as good as some of the other leg locks we're gonna talk about later. Next is the knee bar. You can't knee bar? The knee bar is the most slept on leg lock in my opinion. Not as available as a straight ankle or a heel hook like we'll talk about later, but it's super devastating because it targets the knee. And once it's locked on tight, it's really hard to escape. I'm gonna put in B tier simply because it's kind of situational, but it's a good submission, believe me. Now the toe hold. The toe hold can be strong if you have a lot of control on their leg, but like the knee bar, it's not the most available. It also mainly targets the foot, so it's not as strong. It's cool because you can use it to force reactions when you're on top. However, it doesn't particularly have a ton of power, control, or even availability. So I'm gonna have to put it down in C tier. Now it's time to talk about the leg lock you've all been waiting for, the heel hook. The heel hook is brutal. It's not only super available, but it's extremely devastating. Please tap to these. It's also one of those submissions that to this day a lot of people don't know how to defend. So you can just become one of those blue belts that's really good at heel hooks and before you know it you'll be tapping out all the old school black belts that say leg locks don't work. It's one of those submissions where if you're really good at it, it completely changes the way people will grapple with you. They'll be afraid to pass your guard because if you entangle their legs it's over. And it'll change the way they play guard because if they leave their legs open you can easily fall back for a leg lock and get a finish. It opens up so much, and that's the reason I'm putting it in S tier. It's the second best submission behind the rear naked choke. But now we're going to stop talking about good submissions, and we're going to start talking about wrist locks. It's really hard to isolate someone's arm well enough to really finish this. People would kind of just rip it, try to get panic taps, but at a higher level, no one's going to tap to this. I'm sorry, but it's going in F tier. I know there are going to be some wrist lock enthusiasts in the comment section, but it is what it is. Now, the buggy joke. I mean, a buggy choke. Don't get me wrong, the buggy choke isn't a useless submission, but to go for it, you have to get your guard passed. You're putting yourself in a position to get arm triangled. 
If someone pressures in, it becomes really hard to finish. And don't even get me started if slams are allowed. This is going in D tier. Now the straight arm bar. This is the odd sibling in the Americana Kimura family. Basically, you go for it when they strain their arm out when you're trying to attempt a Americana or Kimura, and then you just get the armbar like that. So it's kind of niche, but you can also find it in other positions. Like here, you see me going for it and setting up a triangle with it. It's kind of like an armbar, but instead of using your hips to hyperextend their arm, you're using your arms, which naturally is going to make it weaker and harder to finish. It's still not a bad submission, though, so I'm going to put it in C tier. All right, let's run through some weird submissions real quick. The twister. I think the twister is kind of slept on. When things aren't sweaty, the position offers a lot of control and leads to a pretty cool sub. However, you are just able to take the back there, so especially in a points environment, there's no reason not to just do that. But you also have to take into account people are more used to defending the back, so a lot of people are less equipped to defend the twister. This is kind of a hot take, but I'm putting it in the bottom of a B tier. The groin stretch. This 10th plan submission isn't getting as much love. If someone's too flexible, they just won't tap to this. And if you're not flexible, you can just give up the sweep and then they just won't be able to finish it. F tier. Now the Z lock. The Z lock is a submission that recently bursted onto the scene and has already been hit at ADCC. It's a leg lock that offers a lot of control because you can do it while holding both legs. It also targets the hip, making it extremely devastating. It's a little niche though because you can only hit it from one position. So I'm just putting it in B tier right now. Calf slicers. Calf slicers are a weird one. By going for it, you're actually putting yourself in more danger than your opponent. That's huh? kind of a joke, but there's some truth to it because I've seen so many people get their knee popped while doing this. As you go for this, if someone extends their leg out, your meniscus is going bye-bye. So be very careful when you're applying this. It's also a submission that a lot of people just won't tap to. It's mostly just pain, but I have seen cases where people actually do get injured when they don't tap to this. So I'm not 100% sure, but just know a lot of people won't tap. I'm not going to put in F because there are a lot of positions where this is a good submission to go for as long as you're careful with it. So I'm putting it in D tier and that's the end of the submission tier list. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and click the link down below to get some cool rash guards.